last time they used to be able to eat two bowls of noodles, two bowls mm. of rice. After the operation, they have to learn that I cannot eat those things anymore. I need to concentrate on eating my protein, which is the chicken, the tofu, concentrate on the vegetables. By the time you have finished eating the protein and all those things, you should not feel hungry anymore. Hi, good afternoon, Dr. Tan Chun Hai. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Tony? I'm good. Thank you for availing yourself to share about your expertise in my YouTube channel. Let me just introduce yourself. Dr. Tan Chun Hai is a general surgeon and subspecializing in upper gastrointestinal surgery and bariatric surgery and he is practicing in Singapore. Today, I want to ask you about weight management surgically, bariatric surgery. What is actually bariatric surgery? Um, bariatric surgery is an uh, operation, a surgery uh, performed onto the stomach as well as part of the intestine to help uh, patients uh, lose weight. Now, it's okay. not just to help patients lose weight. It also helps with the patient's comorbidities uh, associated with obesity, such okay. as uh, diabetes and uh, other things. So, when we have patients who are overweight, we don't send them straight away to bariatric surgery, right? Yes. So, what is the qualifying uh, criteria for the patients to have bariatric surgery? First, the patient must must know of what is bariatric surgery, so I will explain that to them. And they must want the surgery, so I will explain that to them also. And they must qualify for the surgery. So for, for us, we will look at the latest guidelines that will say that for Asians, BMI more than 30 uh, do qualify and do benefit from uh, bariatric surgery with and without uh, comorbidities. So I will do a one-to-one -one patient assessment and yep. see whether it will benefit them or not. So, for example, if I have a patient with BMI of 30, yes. do we try something conservative first to manage the weight or go straight to bariatric surgery? Yes, I think Tony, that's a very good question. Um, I also believe that uh, if the patient has got a BMI of 30, we should try conservative management first. So we should try dietary changes. We should try lifestyle changes. Okay. We should try, uh, you know, the, the patient to see a dietitian to make modification to, to, to what they are eating. We try a uh, diet exercise for a period of time, three months, six months, mm. and see whether it works. If it works, then it's very good for the patient. If it doesn't work, then we can explore other things like maybe medication, maybe balloon insertion into the stomach. And bariatric surgery is, of okay. course, more invasive. That's why yep. we will we will discuss with the patients, see what they're right. So if I put it to more extreme, BMI of 40, is it worth to try conservative treatment or go straight to bariatric surgery? Now, when you reach a BMI of 40, you will usually have uh, some more symptoms. Uh, you, can, you can have severe back pain, uh, knee pain, ankle pain. You can have uh, maybe already have uh, diabetes or or heart attack or stroke or all these comorbidities. So yep. trying to make them try diet exercise may not be the most useful for them in the first place. So I will discuss that with them. And I think by the time they come and see me as a bariatric surgeon, they have already decided that they want to have some form of intervention. So I will provide that option to them. And especially at a higher BMI, because we know that bariatric surgery is more uh, useful and more effective at a higher BMI compared to the cutoff, which is at actually the real cutoff for Asians is at 27.5. But I think I, I try to be a bit more conservative. I think 30 will be, will be a good way where we will start. So, what do you do in bariatric surgery that make the patient lose weight? 
Yes, I think most patients ask me, is it because I just cut the stomach away, that's why I cannot eat? Or you eat less, that's why you, you lose weight? So the answer is yes and no. So the yes is, yes, we do cut maybe about 60 to 70% of the stomach away in a sleeve gastrectomy, which is the most common bariatric surgery uh, done in Singapore and in the whole world uh, currently. Um, we also... What would they sleeve gastrectomy? Sorry. What is sleeve gastrectomy? Uh, so, so that people can understand what we are talking I about. see. So sleeve gastrectomy is an uh, operation in which you remove the outer part of the stomach. Uh, about 60 to 70% of the stomach is being removed such that the remaining uh, stomach looks like, a, looks like a sleeve or what people call a curved banana. So that okay. your, the, the volume of the stomach that you can, of the stomach left is very little. You can eat very little, about maybe one quarter of what you can usually eat. But I think the choice of the food that you need to eat also is very important. Yeah, but it's not just the volume reduction that, that helps with the patient. It is also the hormonal changes, the body set point, and the many other changes in the body that helps and makes the patient lose weight. Yeah, okay, okay. So, they lose weight by eating less. That is one hormonal changes. Hormonal changes. hormonal changes, body set point, and the other many changes that doctors cannot even describe. Uh, yes. What is body set point, Yonai? Body set point is a body defense mechanism. So i give you an example. Uh, I'm sure maybe your audience know of the, the, the game show called The Biggest Losers. Uh, I think that was very popular in the America many years ago. So you can see that during the during the TV series, uh, a lot of them do a lot of PV exercises and they lose a lot of weight to see which which uh, which contestant lose more weight. So that's the biggest losers. Now there's a there's a study that shows that five years down the road, almost all the participants have regained back the weight, except for two participants because they went to do bariatric surgery. So the body set points for it continue to drop and they continue to lose the weight. And okay, this is what we mean by your body defense mechanism try to defend the weight at a certain level. How is bariatric surgery different than let's say abdominoplasty, liposuction, uh you see so uh, abdominoplasty liposuction is uh, is is a cosmetic surgery. Yeah, a bariatric surgery is a surgery indicated for medical condition. Yeah, it helps them lose weight. Yes, but it also helps them to improve the comorbidities such as diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol. Uh, it also improves the fatty liver. Your obstructive sleep apnea, the snoring, also improve. And then with the improvement in your weight, you will see improvement in your back pain, your ankle pain, your knee pain, uh, all, all, these, all these things. So I think modifications in the stomach and the intestine is what uh, bariatric surgery is about. But liposuction is just taking out the fat, taking out the fat in the below the skin level. So those are cosmetic surgery. So those are not bariatric surgery. At some stage, it will, the body weight will come back again will become obvious. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes, I think a lot of what some of my patients have already tried liposuction, they have already tried abdominoplasty, so they remove a bit of the fat, but the body composition and the way that the body metabolizes is still different, it's still originally the same. So it is possible that they will put back on the, the yeah, weight yeah, yeah. after that. Okay, I, I want to ask you more technical uh, Yes. How do you do the operation? Do you do it keyhole or do you do it open or how do you do it? The operation is done through keyhole. Uh, yeah. It's done through maybe about three small little holes or maybe four small little holes with each hole uh, about 0 0.5 cm or 1 cm. Uh, we hardly do uh, bariatric surgery open nowadays with the improvement in technology. I think laparoscopic is the way to go. Um, 
Uh, the last time I've done open work was more than maybe 10 years ago or 15 mm. years ago. Is, is there any case where um, keyhole surgery is not suitable for bariatric patient? Um, it is uh, when you encounter problem like bleeding or a big problem that cannot be solved through the keyhole surgery, then it, maybe it has to be converted to open surgery. So I think that uh, will be discussed with uh, the patient. Uh, most of the time, I would say 99 for a seven percent of the time, it's all laparoscopic surgery, keyhole surgery. So the patient actually feel less painful and recover faster. How long does it take to finish the operation? The operation can range from maybe uh, one hour, two hour. So very, very fast. Yeah, so I think it depends on the type of operation. There's more complex one that will take maybe more than two hours, maybe three hours, maybe four hours. But uh, more like, let's say for sleeve gastrectomy, mm -hmm. I think it easily can be done within an hour or two. Yeah. So it also depends on uh, how how big the patient is. Like you say BMI 40, I think 40 is okay. I've done BMI 50, BMI 60, BMI 70. I think they are a bit more challenging. So... Oh. And most patients stay an average of two days in hospital, one day or two days. Some maybe want okay. to stay three days, but average of two days. Is it a risky surgery? What are the risks? Is it a risky surgery? The answer is uh, depends on who does the operation. So bariatric surgery should be done by bariatric trained surgeon. Okay. So generally, it is done by bariatric surgeon. If it is done by a bariatric, bariatric surgeon, surgeon. Uh, properly by a bariatric surgeon, it is actually as safe as the common operation such as the gallbladder operation or a hip replacement, knee replacement type of surgery. So it is actually safe if the surgeon is well trained in bariatric yeah. surgery. Okay, but what are the risks uh, that we are talking about that you explained to the patients before the operation? Yeah. So I think the most fearful risk that I, I talk to my patient is a leak. So when we cut part of the stomach or we cut part of the intestine and join the intestine to the stomach, uh, the most feared complications by the doctors as well as the patient is a leak. So when there's a leak, it becomes much more troublesome. The patient has to stay in the hospital longer. Uh, the patient may require a repeat operation. They may need to put in the tubes into the abdomen to, to clean up the, uh, the dirty things coming out from the stomach. So those are the things that I, I will explain to the patient. So also all operation has got a risk of bleeding. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, the patient will have to learn how to eat properly. Because I think after the operation, because your stomach is smaller, you also need to learn how to eat properly and swallow properly. So everything has to be done slowly. Okay. Isn't it automatic when the stomach is smaller, you become full faster or we have to learn? Yeah. So I think um, the the patients will revert to last time they used to be able to eat two bowls of noodles or two bowls mm. of rice. So I think after the operation, they have to learn that I cannot eat those things anymore. I need to concentrate on eating my protein, which is the chicken, the tofu, Concentrate on the concentrate on the uh the the vegetables and then most of the time together with me and my bariatric dietitian we will advise the patient by the time you have finished eating the protein and all those things you should not feel hungry anymore and please do not touch the rice the noodles the the carbohydrates. It's fascinating. So give me some idea, yeah. If people with BMI of 70, 70 was your highest, was it? 70. Um, I think it was BMI 80, 82 80. or 83. Yeah. What, what is the weight? BMI 82, 83. What is the weight? What is the height? Uh, right, roughly. The highest? The highest, I think, was about 214 kg. 214. Okay, 214 yeah. kg. And then... After successful bariatric surgery, how fast is the weight loss after the uh, bariatric so surgery? For that, so the, for that patient, I think he, I didn't really push him very much, but I think he has really lost about 60, 70 kg within six months. And then 
if a patient uh, has 214 kg, 214, yeah, do you use one operating table or use special table to do this operation? Yeah, so there is uh, there, there is uh, the operating table I looked at at my hospital is able to support the patient's weight of up to 400 kg. Wow. So, yeah. So there are additional uh, side plates that we can put on the operating table so that we can support the patient uh, 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 sideways as well as yeah. the operating table is strong enough to take the weight of up to 400 kg. So I mm. think... Uh, the special table. That has special table or? Oh, it's the it's the it's the it's the table that uh, we use. So I checked with the manufacturer and I checked with the the specifications. So these are the things I know. So I will check and make sure that we are able to okay, do all okay. those things first. Then when you do surgery, right, Because the body is so wide, isn't it very difficult to do? Where you have to lean forward to do. Yeah. So I have to stand on the standing stool to make sure that uh, we are still able to do the operation safe. And then you need to lean forward also, right? Because the body is so wide, you stand on the side. And how uh, do you do it? You stand on the leg or? So, so this is with uh, laparoscopic surgery. So we have extra long instruments, especially for bariatric surgery. Yeah. So I think I have all those instruments uh, in my hospital. So we, we can do that. Hmm. Okay. I really admire you. La. This is not very easy to do. When I have a fat patient, very obese patient to do spine surgery or oh, struggle like mad. So, but your patient is like double or triple than the patient that I have in size. So, I really, I, I think it's not easy. Very, very difficult. But thank you for sharing. Is there any one or two parting sentences that you want to tell the audience about bariatric mm -hmm. surgery? I would say that uh, bariatric surgery is something that uh, most people are fearful of. So I think everybody is worried that uh, bariatric surgery is risky. And like like what you have rightly asked, is it a risky operation? So the answer is, if it's done by a trained uh, specialist in bariatric surgery, I think it's safe hands. And I will prepare my patients properly so that even the risk can be managed and I'll try to decrease the risk uh, even more with some of my uh, techniques. And also um, for for patients with BMI of maybe about 35, 40, 45, now the risk of getting heart attack, diabetes, uh, heart problems, adverse cardiovascular events uh, that will come for the patient's health in the next maybe five years, 10 years, those are real risk and they are yeah. at higher risk compared to, to normal people. So the if they don't do surgery, if, if they don't lose weight, correct. they don't lose weight. Yes, correct. So I think the aim of uh, the surgery is actually to help them reduce those risks and become healthier and be able to lead a more normal life uh, rather than right. just uh, the misconception that bariatric surgery is to lose weight. Actually, it's to help people get a healthier yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, okay. correct. Thank you so much, Jun Hai, for your time and sharing. Thanks, Dr. Tony. Thank you very much. Actually, yeah. Uh, to the listeners that are listening to this conversation, I hope you all also learning something. And if you have problem with obesity, with high BMI, you may want to consider uh, bariatric surgery. If you have tried everything else, and it doesn't work, then you may want to consider this type of operation. You can look for Dr. Tan Chun Hai. Okay, thank you so much for listening, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.